Welcome to the Living Word, the teaching ministry of Pastor Fisayo Adeniyi, lead pastor of the Ransomed House Lagos. Get ready for enlightenment, encounter, and impartations by the Word. Be blessed as you listen. I was glad when I was told, let us go to the house of the Lord. It's because the house of the Lord is not the place of the dead, but the place of the living. It's because there is a thing about God that when you come in one way, you don't go in, you don't go out the same way. Because in your life, the law of the temple is going to be fulfilled. The law of the temple says the gate you're coming through, you must not go back by that way. Let me say this to you, the way you come, it's not the way you are going. Announce to somebody that the same way you came, it's not the way you are going out. Because by the reason of grace, God is transforming your life. Say to someone, this is my day. Never you come to church without an expectation to be tortured, to be changed, to be transformed. We don't come to church to meet with each other. It's not a social gathering. It's a spiritual gathering. It's an encounter with Jehovah. Look at somebody and say, I have come to meet with God. No, no, no. Say with a smile. When you are going to meet with the president, there's a way you speak. So look at your neighbor with a smile. I have come to meet with God. Do you believe that? Do you believe that? Do you believe that? Come on, somebody rejoice. This is not the way they rejoice. When they rejoice, they dance a little. Can somebody rejoice? Whether you are in the room or whether you are online, I want to say welcome to your season of transformation. I've got a word from God and I know that word will bless you. Amen. Look at your neighbor and say, I'm about to be transformed. The Bible says when he sent his word, he sent his word to heal and to deliver them. Hallelujah. So when the word comes, is an instrument of deliverance. Is an instrument of transformation. Uh, it's not just a word we speak because it is time for the word. No, it is because that's the catalyst for transformation. Uh, that's a catalyst to move our life forward. So if you are online, I want to say welcome to church. Uh, I want you to sit back, uh, take a note, uh, and just rejoice in the Lord because your life is about to be transformed. Psalm 66, uh, and we read four verses. Psalm 66, uh, and we read four verses from the King James Version. And we want to go to Thou Comest Goest today. Glory to God. Hallelujah. The Bible says, Psalm 66, verses 8 to 12. Don't worry, you can go. Have you seen it? I'm not singing again. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. All right, the Bible says, Oh, bless our God, ye people, and make the voice of praise to be heard. There's a way you praise and it is hard. Is somebody listening to me? There's a way you praise and it is not hard. The Bible says, Make the voice of praise to be what? Come on, let it be hard in this house. I thought you said you are a people that do the word of God. Did you hear when she shouted? I didn't hear to me at all. The Bible says make the voice of praise to be heard. Can somebody make the voice to be heard? Let me, let me teach you one thing that causes rejoicing. See, in your belly here, there is a sound that comes from your belly, not from your head. Say, out of your bellies shall rivers of living water flow. Sometimes you say, Hoo! You see that? That's not here. Oh, no, it's from here. Something will move inside of you. Do you want to try it? Do you want to try it? One, two, three, go. Hoo! Aha! The shout. That's the shout. Let the voice of praise be heard. Somebody shout again. (laughs) Glory to God. You see something something moving in your stomach? Eh, You feel it. Glory to God. That's one way in which you can slim your stomach down. Glory to God. Hallelujah. The Bible says, Oh, bless our God, people, and make the voice of his praise to be heard, which ordered our soul in life, and sovereign not our feet to be moved. That's why we praise. Verse 10 says, For thou, O God, has proved us. <laughs> now, listen, listen to us. Thou, O God, has proved us. Thou has tried us as silver is tried. Thou has brought us into the nets. 
Thou laidst affliction upon our loins. You didn't like that part. That's why I made you shout first. Glory to God. He said, Thou hast caused men to ride over our heads. We went through fire and through water, but thou hast brought us us out into a wealthy place. One, two, three, go. Let's do the 12, 12 together. Thou hast caused men to ride over our heads. We went through fire and through water. But thou hast brought us out into a wealthy place. For a few minutes this morning, I'm speaking on the wealthy place. Look at your neighbor and say, the wealthy place. Look at your neighbor and say, the wealthy place. The wealthy place. <laughs> Did you read verse 12? He says, thou hast caused men to ride out of our heads who went through fire and through water. But thou hast brought us to the wealthy place. The Lord began to share this sermon with me about a year ago. And he completed it in the month of May. So this is a journey that took me one year. So I want to show you in an hour what took me one year to discover. Do you understand what I'm saying? So this is a life message. This is a message that will transform your life. And this, you see, when we categorize messages as pastors, one of the things we do is that there are messages that are based on the Holy Ghost. Um, there are messages that are based on prayers. So that if you need prayer, you, you need to um, renew your prayer life. We'll advise you to listen to those sermons. But what I want to share with you and what I shared with you last week, which is from grumbling to gratitude. And today is about Christian living. It's about Christian living. I want to equip you for life and for destiny. The wealthy place. Shall we pray? Father, thank you. Because the entrance of the world will give light, give understanding even unto us simple people. As simple folks, we've come to your feet, even to learn. Lord, I make my tongue the pen of a ready writer. Lord, I distill the word of life upon the spirit of your people. After now, make us better people. Let us walk according to your counsel for our lives. Uh, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. and amen. Hallelujah. Glory. My disciples can actually say those prayers, Abby. You, you can know what is next. Glory to God. Look at them and say, welcome to the worldly place. Now sit down like a wealthy person. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, <laughs> I will say some things that will shock you. Because it might not be what you want to hear. Uh, what you are expecting to hear as it concerns the wealthy place. But I want to teach you what scripture says. So that your success and your prosperity can be guaranteed. Are you going through pain? Are you going through thirst? Are you going through tough times? Are things not working for you as you are the hot to? Are your bills piling up? Or have they really piled up? Like, you see, there is a piling up of bills. There are piled up bills, right? So there are differences. Trials are everywhere, and you can see temptations everywhere facing you. You are in the midst of life. Are you in the midst of struggles? Are you actually fighting for your sanity? Are you fighting for your life? You come to church, look abundantly cool. People look at you and say, there's no problem with this person. You are doing good. Life is cool at for you and with you. But right within you, you know some things aren't working. So that even though I use the makeup, I use all the facade, the thing on the inside still tells me that things aren't working as they ought to work. Have you labored so much and then you still have the average that is so little? Then you have to listen to what I want to share with you today. I've discovered that in the journey of life, things were, there would always be the valley period in our lives. When we talk about the valley period, it doesn't necessarily mean that, um, it doesn't necessarily signify uh, that um, you have financial difficulties. A valley can be a lack. Valley can be pain. Valley can be suffering. It's just a point of departure from the point where God says you are going to be, Right? Trial steps and temptations are actually a proof of two things. Write this down. Trials, temptations, and tests are a proof of two things. They are a proof of two things. When you go to trials, when you go to temptations and tests, they are a proof of two things. Number one, they are a proof of life. <laughs> Glory to God. That you are alive. Job said in Job chapter 5 verse 7, he said, man is of little days, but born to trouble. He said, like the spark. Like the spark flies upward. He says, man is of little days, but he is born to trouble. Right? So you will find trouble. The Bible says in John 16, 33, the Savior assuring us. He said, in this word, he said, you will find tribulation. He said, but be of good cheer. I have overcome 
the word. So there is the overcoming anointing. But number one is that, listen, dear friends, that we are here is a proof uh, that um, if, if you have trials in your life right now, presently, things aren't working the way you ought, it ought to work, whether you are online or in the room, I want you to understand that it's a proof that you are alive, right? Yeah, dead people don't have troubles. Glory to God. It's a proof of life. Number two, it proves you are on your way to the wealthy place. Uh, and I need you to understand that. If you're writing notes, you want to underline or write the wealthy place in capital. The second thing it proves is that you are on a journey to the wealthy place. You are on the journey to the wealthy place. Uh, you know, yes, some of you are like, how can this prove that I'm on my way? But to the wealthy place uh, with all these tests and trials. But you know, that's exactly what the Bible says. That's exactly what the Bible promised you and I. That's exactly what the scripture says. You know, we have strange ideas and unbiblical ideas about the, about the wealthy place or the place of rich fulfillment. And this is because we refuse to let the test of scripture speak for itself. Right, so people just uh, and Pentecostals do that a lot. We just take a portion of scriptures and just begin to quote it and run away with it and say, "Oh, well, the place, well, the place, and all of that." But we do not actually allow the text to speak for itself. So we are really going to look at the textual interpretations of scriptures today and see what exactly the Bible is talking about. One of the basic laws of biblical interpretation is allowing the Bible speaks for itself, speak for itself. So you are not actually trying to deduce or trying to add revelation to it. You just take what the, what you find in the book as so. It's actually called a literal translation or literal revelation or interpretation of scripture. So we want to let the scriptures today speak for itself. But before I do that, what is the worldly place, right? Let me define to you what the worldly place is. What is the worldly place? The worldly place is a place of rich fulfillment. It's a place of rich fulfillment. The worldly place is a place of rich fulfillment. Um, um, and when we talk about rich fulfillment, it is not just speaking about silver or gold, right? So, because when you talk about the wealthy place, people have now discovered, people have made it look like what the Bible is promising us is a lot of money and a lot of gold and silver. But that's not what our scripture is talking about. The wealthy place is actually a place of rich fulfillment. Uh, that's not talking about silver or gold, like I said, but an abundance and all round fulfillment on our desires and expectations. Do you get that? The wealthy place is an all-round fulfillment as it concerns your desires and your expectation. So oh, I've got desires. Um, some people have desires. Um, what the next 30 years look like for them? What the next 10 years look like for them? Is having their own houses, right? So when, you are, when that desire is, ex- is fulfilled, a rich fulfillment uh, of your desires and expectation, then you have entered into the wealthy place. Therefore, what is wealth to you is not what is wealth to me. Do you understand that? Somebody just wants to buy Benz. Until he has a Benz, he doesn't believe he has entered into the wealthy place. Do you understand what I'm saying? That's his expectation. That's his desire. Somebody else is thinking, just get me a car just any car a toyota will do me good and give me a good family with children and then i'm able to afford all the good things of life we travel where we want to travel and i'll have a good relationship with god that's my definition of the wealthy place so when you actually have that fulfillment of your desires then is the wealthy place when somebody says i want to have by 40 i i just want to have retired from really actively looking for money i just want to be drawing from my investments i i want to be able to travel anywhere i want to send my children to school to the good schools i want to afford the good schools of things of life and the person says listen to this if i can attain and achieve all of these things then that's all that's the wealthy place for the person so the wealthy place is a place of rich fulfillment of desires and expectation. Look at you and say the wealthy place is the place where your needs, desires, and expectations have been met. Jeremiah 29 verse 11. The Bible says, uh, uh, I know the thought I think towards you, the thought of good and of evil, to give you a future and a hope. And that's just to take you to the expected end. There is an end expected. Psalms 20. And then verse 4, scripture was saying in Psalm 20 verse 4, it says it will fulfill the desire. It says it will fulfill you the, your desires and your purposes. So your purposes and your desires, the Lord will fulfill. 145 verse 16 of Psalms, scripture says he opened his hands and fulfilled the desires of every living thing. So you see, when that desire has been fulfilled, 
but you have entered into that place. Somebody said, I want to marry at this age. I want to have children. I want to have a job that's very good and all of that. And God has made all of those things possible for that person. Then that person is what you call in the wealthy place. So that may be a PhD for somebody, Benz for another guy. It may be a house for somebody. It may be in a loving family for another person. So what is the wealthy place? It is... Um, so, so let me move on here. Before the wealthy place is the place of test. Before you get to the wealthy place is the place of test. The wealthy place, therefore, is a destination. It is not where you are. Uh, before you get to that destination, there is the place of test. That is what the scripture says in Psalm 66. So having had that background, can we read again Psalm 66? And can you give me from verses 10 to 12? Psalm 66, verses 10 to 12. So that, let's see it again. Now, I've given you some background. So when you read it now, you see it with a difference. The Bible says, and, and um, the Bible says, so I'm, I'm going to read it from the New King James Version now. Um, all right. Are you following me? All right. So the Bible says, for you, O God. So give me the New King James Version. The Bible says, for you, O God, have tested us. That's what it says, all right? Um, for you, O God, have tested us. So listen to me, this is what it says. I'm reading it for you. For you, O God, have tested us. You have refined us as silver is refined. Can you see that? Listen very carefully. Verse 11 says, you brought us into the net. You laid affliction on our backs. You have caused men to ride over our heads. We went through fire and through water. But you brought us out to reach fulfillments. That's how the King James called it. The King James called it to the wealthy place. So that after all of these things are done, the Lord therefore now brings you out to the place called the wealthy place. Right? So, as I move on, I think I'm in a good place to let you understand this truth. Uh, let me explain it again for you with scriptural examples. Before the throne, David was anointed. You remember David was anointed in scriptures? And Samuel anointed David. And for seven years, David did not get to the throne. He was, he was anointed. He carried the anointing on his head. The anointing for kingship as a king. But for seven years, he was running around in the desert. He was running around being chased. He was king. Yes, he was anointed. Yes, the anointing was on him. But he didn't enter into the wealthy place for seven years. Joseph had a vision, just like you may have a vision now. But yet, that vision took him to Potiphar's house, first to slavery, to Potiphar's house, then to prison, right? And then eventually, he landed him into the wealthy place. Paul was called. I mean, when, when we talk about people being called, Paul was one of the most dramatic callings you can find in scriptures, right? He, he, he was called, he, he saw Jesus, a light shone upon his path. And he said, God said, I'm going to show you what's going to suffer for me for the Gentiles. I'm sending him to the Gentiles. And for two years, he had nothing. And he knew nothing. No platform. No place to preach. Nobody out of him. Scripture says he was in Arabia for two years. In Arabia for two years. He carried the call of God. Just like you may have the call of God on your life. But it's still not working. Jacob was the carrier of the blessing. But the carrier of the blessing because Abraham blessed him. He won over his brother. They were twins. Right? He won the brother in receiving the blessing, but despite of him receiving the blessing, scripture says, in his time of his pursuit, while he was chasing after, while he was running away from his brother Esau, scripture says that he, he got to a place he, he slept on, on, on a stone. On a stone. He used this as pillow. I don't know whether you have ever slept on the mountain before. But when you use a stone for pillow, and you say it was comfort, then it tells you that your life has been very hard. Do you understand? And from, that was the man who possessed the blessings, what you call the blessings of Abraham. You, you actually sing, Abraham's blessings am I? Abraham. This guy was the bodily representation of Abraham's blessing. And yet it took him to Laban's house. And from Laban's house, the scripture says he was cheated again and again and again. I mean, I've never seen a man so duped that he duped him concerning wife. Have you, have you seen that before? I mean, there, there are levels to being duped. Uh, for them to dupe you and give, give you another wife, right? I, I wonder what the pastor was doing as, as they were joining them together. I, I didn't know how the duping happened. Did they join them? Like, I, you, you two people stand before me and I say, okay, I pronounce your husband and wife. Is it at night they change the wife? Or I, I, It's a lot of questions there. But he, he had the blessing, yet he was duped. 
Israel would have to enter into the wealthy place. But because it was the place of promise fulfilled. The promise was that he was taking them to a land that flows with milk and honey. That the face of the Lord was 247, day and night. That's what scripture says. And it is not like the vegetable garden that they left in Egypt where they had to water it day and night. He said, this one flows with milk and honey. They will take vines they did not plant. Right? Everybody like that. Houses you did not build. That looks like a very good promise. God did not tell them that what will take them to that place called the place of rich fulfillment. What will take them there? They would have to pass through Red Sea. Pass through Jordan. Have to shout at Jericho so that Jericho can fall. Have to kill giants. Do you understand? See how many years they stayed in the wilderness just so they can enter even into the wealthy place. Before Jesus began his ministry, your Lord, your Savior, Jesus Christ, he had to pass the test of the devil. Right? The devil came at him. Look at all the glories of this world. Somebody says, that is, you don't understand what it means by saying the glory of this world. It's like taking you to Banana Island and say, you know, you have the call of God. Say, yes. This is a billion naira. This is Range Rover. This is Omar Jeep. And this is um, a house for you on Banana Highland. Bow. And then we'll still go and fulfill your ministry. Amen. Do you know how easy it is to start a ministry to the billion naira with Omar Jeep? And a house in Banana Island. Glory to God. We are not disturbing anything. Your anointing will still flow. What God has given you will still flow. You are still going to lay hands. We are just helping you to fulfill your ministry. That's what that test looks like. That's what it looks like. It's not, it's not, God is still, I mean, is it not souls you are looking for? You gain more souls. You get more souls. Just bow. And he refused. He had to pass the test. Before you could be called your savior and your Lord, you also must pass the test. Are you going through trials or temptation? It tells me you have a vision and you have a reason for living. And there is a journey you are on. And it is a journey to the wealthy place. The testing of the Lord. The Bible says, Go, oh God, you have tested us. That's what that scripture says. The testing of the Lord is never to destroy us, but to purify us. You may want to write that down. The blessing, the testing of the Lord. That's the difference between God's testing and the devil's testing. One will destroy, the other will purify. God's testing you is so that he can purify you. He can preserve you. He can test and purify you. Therefore, entering into the wealthy place is as a result of passing this test. <laughs> All right. You have, that one, absolutely, you have to write it down. Because you see, the test you are going through now, Entering into the worldly place is dependent on you passing this test. I know it's hard. I know it's difficult. But you entering into the place of rich fulfillment is dependent on you passing it. If you junk this, if you fail this, you will be going cyclically. Israel failed a test. Because of garlic, cucumber, I told you last week. Garlic, cucumber, and onions. I've never seen people more crazy than that. You, how can you be remembering garlic and onions? I, have, I, have, I, don't, I, don't, I don't, I think I can live without garlic and onions all of my life. Don't you think so? The things that you find difficult to live, they say, will you be able to live without eating rice? Ah, that one it can be difficult. Garlic. You can't hug me when you eat garlic. Eh? So what is difficult in staying away from garlic? They say, we remember the garlic and the cucumbers we used to eat. And they complained again for water. I thought that was valid. I thought that was valid. Uh, if you have stayed some places in, on island, you will know that water is valid. Especially when you on the tap and the thing looks brown. You're asking yourself, is it water or merinda? Do you understand? So, you know it's very valid for them to actually ask for water. It was valid. Valid reason for them to ask. Ah, but it was the way they went about it. It was the way they went. They complained. They murmured to God. And they failed the test. And, and God said, go. They said they, went, they got into the land and they saw the giant there. You see, it was, the, it was the generations of Anak that was, that was there. These are generations of giants. He said, we were like, he said, we saw them, they were mighty, and were like grasshoppers before them. Now, if you read scriptures very well, you will find out that there was no place they interviewed those giants. So it wasn't the giant. It, it, so, so they said, we were like grasshoppers before them, and so were we to them. Ah, did you ask them? Did, are they the one that told you that you are like grasshoppers? No, they came to that conclusion themselves. And they said, we are not able. For we are not able to go on and take that country. <laughs> we are not able to go from Jordan to the sea. 
You know that, you know that's me just turning the song around, right? Uh, that's what they said. They said, we're not able. And they were destroyed because of that. How many times have we been destroyed? Because we say we are not able. But that's not my gist today. That's not my call today. That's not what God wants me to tell you today. Entering the worldly place is a result of passing that test. Israel stayed 40 years. Scripture says until that generation died. Do you see that? They were not able to enter into the worldly place, into rich fulfillment, the desires of their life, the expression of their life, because they murmured and complained. The Bible says and the Bible suggests to us that the Lord waited to kill all of them. The reason many people are stagnant in their journey is not because of God, it's the way you responded to a test. Therefore, I say to you again, you must pass this test. Look at your neighbor and look at him, my boy. This is not, you see, this is difficult. You know, when you don't travel out, people say, I must pass IELTS. I mean, if you are going to Canada, <laughs> Japa, I must pass this test. But listen to this. This is one of the most important things you must pass in your life. Look at your neighbor, I to Abba and say, Pastor is speaking to you. You've got to pass this test. No, eat the person on the shoulder and say, I mean, pass this test. Here's a good place to make these statements. I want to make five statements here. The Lord made them to me on Friday, and I want to make them to you. But one, the wealthy place is not the starting point. It is the end of the process. It is the destination. So when people shout, wealthy place, they don't understand scriptures. According to scriptures, the, end, the wealthy place is not the starting point. Nobody starts out from the wealthy place, no matter how rich your parents are. <laughs> because you would have your own visions and goals. Nobody starts out from the wealthy place. It is not the start. It is the end of the process, the destination. Number two, God will never empower with riches that which he has not tested. God will never empower with riches that which he has not tested. So you can see that all of this test is to see whether you can carry the blessing. It's not that God, the devil is stronger than God. It is that God is trying to prove you. Number three, if you don't pass this test, you may as well forget about the blessings. And that's what happened to Israel. I showed you 40 years. Those guys, you waited for a generation to die. (laughs) So if you don't pass this test, you may as well forget about the blessings. Number four, truly the Lord makes rich. He brings those he has molded into rich fulfillment. The Bible says the Lord make it rich and he has no sorrow. So the Lord actually makes rich. But who are those he makes rich? Those whom he has molded. Like a master stays at the clay and he makes the pot. Like the potter makes the pot. God is making your life. If you allow him fully mold you with experiences, mold you with the things, disappointment and all of those things, they are part of the making process. You will come out shining. Number five, search and learn. <laughs> when the Lord said this to me, he said, search and learn. And I stayed there. For 30 minutes, I was searching. In my spirit, searching from experience of people I know in the kingdom. He said, search and learn. There are no lucky breaks in this kingdom. There is no price for those who can pay the price. There is no price for those who can't pay the price. He says, search and learn. There are no lucky breaks in this kingdom. If you see anybody in this kingdom who is making it, a church that is growing, a pastor that is making it, it's not luck. Is somebody following me? A tech guy in your company who is, who is the head, he's young, he says, he's just lucky. There is nothing called luck. There are no locks in this kingdom. People make, by, make it by paying the price. By following kingdom principles. By allowing God to mold them. Say, search and learn. There are no lucky breaks in this kingdom. And then I began to search. (laughs) All the names I found. I saw that there was a time that they were nothing. I saw that there was a time they didn't have much. I saw that there was a time they were also passed on in 20 people. I saw that there was a time that all they had was just proclamation of faith. I saw that there was a time their first house was built by faith. Confession, speak it. Blocks are coming now. Cement are coming now. These days, they build mansions. I remember my father in law told me one day, went to one of his houses that he just finished. And he said, Fisayo, I said, Sir, 
He said, you see the house in Jerry? I said, I know. He said, faith built that. I said, glory to God, sir. He said, this one. He said, faith did not have faith. He said, I didn't use faith at all. We just decided to build. And we started carrying money and building. There's a level to these things. You know, I tell you every time, there are levels to these things. Why? He had paid the price. If you don't pay the price, you would also not get there. Do you want to get into the wealthy place? Do you want to get to the wealthy place? That's a question. Then you must pass the test. The psalmist says you have tested us. Now, if you would give me that scripture again, I want to show you something from Psalm 66. For you, O oh God, have tested us. 66 verse 10. Now, I taught us that when we are reading scriptures, we should read textually, right? And then number two, take note of all the colons and all of that. Did I say that to you? Right? So this is how we study scriptures. If you see verse 10, verse 10, the Bible says, For you, O Lord God, have tested us. What is there at the back of that? Eh? A semicolon. What does that say? Do you know what semicolon says? Did you pass GNS English or you guys just <laughs> ran away? It looks so basic, but it's very important. A semicolon means that we are continuing in that line of reasoning. A semicolon means this statement continues. It's not an ending. Actually, a semicolon also says what follows after actually explains what comes before. Basic English. That's why I tell you that if you don't know this English, buy Bible in Igbo. Bible by, by bullying Yoruba so that you can get it. Why, why is this important, ladies and gentlemen? It's because Bible says, for you, oh God, have tested us. And he began to list how he will test us. What you see that follows is how the Lord will test us. Say you have refined us as silver. Right? So I want to give you five tests you must pass. Hallelujah. The first one is the test of character refinement. That's a test you have to pass. Character refinement. The Bible says in 66 verse 10, it said you have refined us as silver is refined. <laughs> refined us as silver is refined. Now, silver is refined how? Through water. Fire. You know you sing the song. Give me one fire song you sing. Set my heart on fire for you. I want to burn for you. Okay, I, Jewish people sing that one, right? Eh? Mm. Hey. <laughs> you see, that tells you, that song actually says, I want to be tried by you. The song, they say, it's not popular, <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> I want to be tried by you, purified. They say, it's not popular. It's not, if it was like, I want to be blessed by you. Eh? Glorified, ha, you can take whatever you have, give it to me. Ah, <laughs> you know it will be, you, you 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 know it will blow, right? It will blow. The reason you don't like this is because it's purifying. Fire purifies. Listen, if you have ladies who wear gold and guys who wear gold, they will tell you that if you put real gold in fire, it will come out better. If you try and put your GL inside fire, it will become black. Do you see the difference? The difference is that fire purifies one, fire destroys one. When you go through fire, what you are made of will show. Whether you are gold or whether you are panda, who will know? Because whether you are gold, you will be very refined. You come out better. That's character refinement. If you are actually fake, pretending to be good, we'll see it also. Many believers, when they go through trials, they're supposed to refine their character. They become very sober and sad. In fact, they stop going to church. They stop praying. It tells you that they were not made of the original in the first place. You know why Joseph didn't revenge against his brothers? Let me say this to you. You see, there's a way believers come to church with the mindset of, well, now we are in church. But you say, reason them, reason them. They sell you. Your brothers, they sell you. Now, when they sold you, they didn't sell you to U.S., they sell you to Somalia. Now, they for sell you to good people. They sell you to Boko Haram for, for Somalia. Now, reason now. You suffered a loss. You now got through all those processes. They now came. They now bowed down. Hey! As they bowed down, say, 
I don't tell you. <laughs> I don't tell you. The moon and the stars. Where is your father? Go and get him. That vision has become reality. I know some people here. They first of all, first of all, dance around there. What are they trying to do? The vision has become a reality. But look at that man. He said, the Lord sent you. He said, do, he said the Lord has sent me here before you. He said, why? He said, to preserve for himself an inheritance. Listen, dear friends, he could only do that because he had gone through fire. He had been in prison in Potiphar's house. He had learned. Do you understand what I was saying? Before that time, he was a talkative. You know, Joseph put himself in trouble. It wasn't the vision that put him in trouble. He was himself. He was not measured in speech. But after that character refinement, he didn't say much to his brothers again. They say a lot of things. They say, didn't you know that somebody like me would know God? But before, he said, I just had a dream. If I have had another one. The father said, are you saying, must you say everything? But character refinement came. If it was the former Joseph, he would have busted out laughing. <laughs> My dreams will come to pass. Now don't tell you. I serve a God who never fails. You know, they are there. Oh. You know the songs you sing at home? When you're that wicked auntie comes in, that say you can't make it. And then you have made it. And then they, you brought the car home. <laughs> now, say, how are you? I have a God who never fails. I have a God. They say, you are going. You show them. The reason you are still thinking that way and looking forward to that is because that test has not purified you. So you will still stay in fire a small time. See, when you are ready, you will look at her. A hugger says thank you. But until you are preparing to pepper her, you are still going to stay inside that fire small. It has not done its work. Before the test, see how you talk. Even look at you now. You are now more considerate of people. You are very considerate. Some days, you know, even me, I look at my life and I saw how the Lord said, began, how I had to begin again in ministry, coming to Lagos. See, the character refinement God was not able to do for 10 years. He has got it done in one and a half years. Sometimes I'm now more gentle looking at people. People. <laughs> hey, you see what? When you go through life, it refines your character. It gets you better. And you must pass the test. Now God has gotten you. You are more humble. You thought you'd be married by now. But you are not. You are more humble. Can you see? If a guy calls you, hello, you will respond twice. Before, you say, you, you see, refinement is coming. It is coming. Let me say this to you. Nothing calms you down like trials. Nothing refines you like the test of life. There's such wisdom in the words of the Yoruba man. The Yoruba man say, Yo, Jeologma. Can it teach at Okwe? Ah, interpretation. The Yoruba man says that you have not suffered and you say you are wise. Who is the teacher that taught you? Because you see, test of life, they are put in place to teach you. Number two, trials and temptation. The Bible says in 66 verse 11, it says, You brought us into the net. You laid affliction on our backs. <laughs> you brought us into the net and you laid affliction on our backs. Psalm 66 verse 11. Trials lead us to the feet of the Christ and shows us our crumbliness. You just, you see when you go trials, now see that you are not as awesome as you thought you were. You are not. And then, test and trials shows us who and what is important. It shows us who and what is important. When I went through there and I came back, I discovered that church members are not so important. I discovered because they were not there. I discovered that family was more important. Do you understand what I'm saying? These days you are not calling your mom. Don't worry. It's because you are fine. Ah. It tells you what is important. Now you pray. You see, you pray now. Before pastors were scammed and God was scammed, he's bringing you through a process. You have gone through stuff, yet you are still standing. Give me 1 Peter 1, 7. God wants to know what you are really made of. He wants to know. You see, Job went through something. He went through a difficult period of his life. Very difficult. 
And Job, Job's wife said in Job chapter 2, verse 9 to 10, Job's wife said, you still retain integ- your integrity. Curse God and die. If he had made that mistake, he would have died and the wife would have remarried. Because when you are looking for a solution, he says you curse God and die. When you die, is there a solution there? But the man waited patiently. The man did what he was supposed to do. Now, 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 7. Look at that. He said that the genuineness of your faith be much more precious than gold that perishes. Though it is tested by what? Come on, answer me. Fire. Fire. May be found to what? To praise, honor, and glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ. It will prove what you are made of. It will prove what you are made of. Number, four, number three now, servitude. He said, that's a test you must pass. He said, you brought us into the net. You laid affliction in our, on our backs. Have you ever had to stay with your junior brother before? Or stay with your senior brother? And they don't even care about you. I mean, the, the things they say. <laughs> you look at them, well, me, <laughs> yeah, Jimmy, <laughs> I've suffered. You know, all of those things are actually killing the pride inside of you because you're actually nothing. You're just clay. You're yeah, just clay. The pride and the ego, God wants to reduce it because where he is taking you to, pride and ego can't survive. It can't. Have you discovered that the greatest of men are the most humble of men? If you hear about the boy and look at him, if they try some of us with 5% of that power that that man has, you'll be going on a convoy. You know, people will tell me that, you know, Babu Yedekbo talks about the fact that he has private jet and all of that. The question I ask people is that, have you ever seen the jet before? Answer me, have you seen the jet before? Have you? The inside. And they said they have like three, golf streams and all that. Have you seen the inside before? Have you even seen his parlor before? If they try you with that, <laughs> stepping onto the next level, <clears throat> you snap that with Instagram. We reels following you. Can you see that? <laughs> you know. You snap it. He said, another level. Just people just do the reels of how the, the, the number of the of the jets. Just put it like that. And then you, you say, What God cannot do does not exist. A new level to do ministry. You see, it is not, it is not. Baba Udebo said something I read in his book. He said, he said, when I bought my first jet, he said my parents were still alive. He said they never stepped into it once. He said it's not my home. It is for the ministry. Little wonder you have never seen the picture. Because he sees it as a means of getting to where he's supposed to go. Look at, that's why God is trying to get your attention. Some of these tests, it's not the devil. That's why you can see that you have gone to deliverance sessions. You have prayed. You have almost died. It's still there. It's because God wants to make you into something he actually wants. God will not bring you into real wealth once you have passed the test of service. Because all he gives you is not just for you. It is to serve others. Jesus said it clearly. Matthew 23 verse 11. He said, whoever wants to be the greatest, he said, let him be the servant of all. But listen, servitude is different from service. <laughs> servitude is the state of being subjected to someone more powerful than you. A condition in which an individual lacks liberty. <laughs> a brother once who came to Lagos. There was no house he was staying. So he was at the, he was, he was at the servitude of his friends. So they can send you out. If you misbehave, they will just cook up a story. And say, my uncle's brother is coming tomorrow. <laughs> so you know you are out. All of those things actually do something as you. He does something to you. Jesus actually gave us an example. The Bible says in Matthew 20, 28. Did you read Matthew 20, 28? The Bible says the Son of Man has not come to serve, but to be served. And to give his life what? A ransom for many. He did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life. Sorry, I said to be served. Sorry. No, to serve and to give his life a ransom unto many. Okay, so you know where the ransom house comes from now, right? Matthew 20. Do you feel like you are working and you are like a slave? 
like what you earn is not is no you can't commensurate with what you, the work you do like they are just using you don't worry you must pass this test because after passing this test greatness in your tomorrow after passing this test a newer job is coming but you must pass this test number 4 betrayer and disloyalty that's another test the test of betrayal the bible says in cc 12 you have caused men to ride over our heads come on <laughs> one thing you will experience on your journey is betrayal i assure you no matter who you are no matter how prayerful you are the sons of men are given to betrayal are you following what i'm saying <laughs> they are given to disloyalty they did it for jesus judas left right they will leave you. They will fought you without a fault. They will tell you you are wrong when you didn't do anything wrong. They will stab you behind you. People you thought you helped, they will say things about you. I've been there varyedly and at many times. People we taught how to interpret scriptures, lay hands, lay leg, lay speech, do everything. That idea, they will turn around and say you are useless. You have nothing. You are da 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 da. Ensure you are not offended. Ensure you don't stop loving people. It's all a test. The devil knows if he can stop you from loving, if he can move you from the point of loving to eating, he can stop the blessings from flowing into you. So all he's doing is that he knows he can't stop the righteous from being blessed, but he can put certain impediments before the righteous that hinders him from the blessing. And one of the ways is to be offended. Therefore, you will be betrayed. Please, I want to ask a question in this hall. Have you ever been betrayed? Raise your hand in this hall. Come on now. Real people came to church. Real people, disloyal people. Glory to God. Those who didn't raise your hand, I want to assure you that it's coming. Hallelujah. It's coming. This is preparation for life. So I'm preparing you before they do it. So when you just, ah, they told me, it's not prophecy. It is the way of man. You see, when he, that's why I said this is Christian living, practical. They will do it. They would. You will house people and they will hurt you. Your family members will hurt you. Glory to God. Somebody you got a job for in your place of work may stop you from being promoted. Get ready. It is the way and the manner of life. Even God that created man, he looked at man. I mean, that one of God's outstanding discoveries was the discovery about man. He said he saw that man was desperately wicked. Ah, ah. <laughs> That's man. Number five. Have you gotten to that place? Another first you will have to pass is this one of just being attacked. And almost consumed. Bible says in CC self, we went through fire and through water. You don't know what is going on, but you just feel like they're just attacking you from everywhere. Have you been there? Where it seems like everywhere you turn like this, ministry, spirit, uh, financially, it seems like you are just being attacked from everywhere. <laughs> you feel like all the ammunition of darkness are just pointed at you. Uh, listen, dear friends, it's still part of it. All of these challenges are supposed to prepare and mold you for the place God is bringing you to, the wealthy place. Therefore, you tell some people what you have gone through or when you tell people, they just betrayed me and they start laughing. You know why? They have been betrayed like 40 times. So they can't, can't see anything there. You tell some people, ah, I don't have money. When you talk to certain people and say you don't have money and you think they should give you money and they are saying we have been there, they are laughing. It's because they know that that was where they were. And if you continue, you also get to the rich fulfillments. But many times, we don't want that advice. We want them to give us money to help us from the process. One of the processes by which Butterfly is made is that he struggles through, the, through that process of being a cocoon and ember and all of that. There was a time that a man was seeing that process going on and he decided to help the butterfly and he, he cut the web. And immediately he cut the web, the, but, but the, the cocoon, the butterfly came out. But this butterfly that came out could not fly. It just stayed there. And he was wondering, what's going on? Why can he not fly? 
He did not understand that the process of fighting your way through the cocoon is part of God's model of making the butterfly to soar. That is where the butterfly actually builds its strength. Without fighting through that thing, it can, it can have strength. A research was made in the U.S. many years ago. I want you to appreciate tests and trials. A research was made in the U.S. And in a, in a controlled environment, plants were, um, trees were planted in a controlled environment. Are you following what I'm saying? In the U.S., in a controlled environment, in a greenhouse. They call it greenhouse. Trees were planted. And one of the things they did was that they ensured that the wind were, not, were stopped from getting to these trees. Right? So there was no wind, uh, nothing. They discovered something. That every time the tree grows, and they grow very fast, they grow to certain height. By themselves, they will cut off. That means they will just break. We get to certain height, they will break. They get to certain height, they break. And one of the discovery, one of the things they discovered was that they were not tried and tested by the wind. One of the things the wind does to a tree as the tree grows is that it gives it balance and sustainability. So that as the wind comes, it shakes and moves to the side. And that actually helps the tree to actually grow taller and to actually also be resistant and resolute. The reason many believers are still babies is because they do not appreciate that the wind of life are given so that you can find balance and, find res- and to be resolute even in your journey in life. Listen, all of these challenges are supposed to mold you. If you don't pass this test, you may as well kiss a better tomorrow goodbye. Read through scriptures. The patriarchs were tested. All the patriarchs. When we talk about patriarchs, we're just talking about Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. All of them. Abraham had the blessing. He was talking to God 247, yet he couldn't impregnate his wife. That test was molding him. That trial was molding him. Proverbs 24 verse 10. Solomon, one of the wisest guys that ever lived, came to a conclusion. He said, if you fail in the time of adversity, your strength is small. Your strength is small. On your journey to becoming all that God prepared for you, you will face diverse trials, pain, and disappointment. The way you react will determine how far you go. I, I have a brother, I have a brother who asked out about six ladies. I know, six ladies. One, two, I know, about six ladies. And all of them said no. Are you following what I'm saying? All of them said no. Some of them after eating the money, to doing some, you know, you can't blame the ladies because they didn't know that was his intention. They just thought he was loving on them. Glory to God, bring things, hallelujah. They go together, eat food and all of that. And then anytime he just says, I'm thinking we should settle down. I want to settle. I love you, Ashe. Just change it for him. You see what I found out? When the lady that told him yes, told him yes, they didn't date for five months before they got married. You know why? Appreciation and value has increased. All this disappointment, he now value it is gone. You understand? Because it has molded him. Now in his marriage, he doesn't even get angry with his wife. He's a very cool-headed guy. You know why? Life has taught him. Like, men, the way some guys are is because they have never had no. God can punish you with some no's so that you will discover that you are not that bright. And you are not that awesome. You know, <laughs> see me now. You know how people say, <laughs> I'm so awesome. Uh, and then when you face it, or you think you know how to do business, and then you do business, do business, and you make profit, but you can't find money. Have you seen that before? You are making sales, but there's still no money in your account. So you start becoming karma. Ugly people are getting married in front of you. Let's face it. There are some girls that you know that they are not. Ah, but they are getting married. You look at your sense. Ah. But you see, in these days now, when brother Elijah says, hello, sister. How are you, ma? How are you, sir? How are... You are not very humble. It's not because you are programmed to think he will ask you out. But now you understand that even people talking to you is a privilege. You use iPhone 14, it does not ring. What's the meaning of iPhone 14? It doesn't ring. Test. It's not so, it's not Makambo, Sheliga, Eshulemi. No, sir. No, sir. It's not the devil chasing you. It is God molding you. 
look at David. The one who stops him from the throne, he saw the guy alive. If he was you, you would kill him. You kill him, sure. Kill the, kill the banger and enter the throne. Straight. He said, I will not talk the Lord's anointed. I will not. But it's the Lord anointed that wanted to kill him. He said, I will not. Look at, look at the growth in his conversation. Therefore, when you read the book of Psalms, you saw a man who was matured in the things of the Spirit. Maturity is not something you come through by laying on of hands. It's deliberate and intentional growth. When you actually react to the trials of life the way you are supposed to. Believers fall off. This is the reason many Christians stop being Christians. They lose their parents. They lose their loved ones. They lose something. They pray God did not answer the way they want him to answer. And they stop being Christians because this type of sermons are not preached to them. You know, there's a way I could have preached um, worldly place that by now you will be standing up and just jumping around. Alluviana, so you enter into the world place. Somebody say, world. <laughs> but this is the process. Here is how the devil stops the righteous from rich fulfillment. You must ensure he doesn't win over you. You must get really, really ready. Can I close by sharing with you? Are you going through trials or tests? I want you to do the following. Number one, stick with the word of God. If you are going through trials or temptation, test, stick with the word of God. That's number one. Job 23 verse 12. <laughs> ah, Job. Job is an awesome guy. Yo. I'm telling you, I have children, so Job is an awesome guy. All the children dead. You seek like an hospital. And he made a statement in Job 23 verse 12. He said, I'll keep your commandments. He said, I honor your word more than my food. My food. He said, I have not departed from the commandment of his lips. I have treasured the word of his mouth more than my necessary food. This is not talking about shawarma. This is talking about necessary food. Food that makes you alive. Have you eaten shawarma at night and you see afterwards you now go and take Gary? Because you know that that's the necessary food, not the shawarma. <laughs> Do you understand what I'm saying? The shawarma was just <laughs> to make you happy. Have you taken pizza before and then say, please, AJ, let's go and cook rice? <laughs> Why? Because that is not your necessary food. This man says, I honor your word more than my necessary food. After he had gone through all he went through, you must honor God's word and keep his commandment. Whatever be the situation, everybody can be a good Christian in the sweet by and by. When there's money in the account, when your car starts and it goes when it's supposed to go, we all can say God is good. In the AC, driving a Land Cruiser 2020, somebody looks at you and you're listening to Pastor Sam and Pastor say God is good. You press the accelerator and say amen, hallelujah all the time. Glory to God. But after 10 years and your wife has not gotten pregnant, somebody say God is good. Say, I'll have to think about it. I'll have to ruminate about it. The goodness of God does not have to do with anything that happens in your life. It is his nature. It is his nature. The Bible says in Matthew 4.4, 4, Jesus said, man shall not live by bread alone. He said, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Isaiah 55 verse 11, the Bible says that surely as the rain comes from heaven and goes on the earth, so is every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. It will not return unto him void, but it shall fulfill the purpose for which it is sent. Listen, if you are going through tough times, know that this also shall pass. This also shall pass. Only the word of the Lord remains forever. Luke eleven twenty eight. 28. All the word of God abounds forever. Are people gathered against you? Speak the word. Are they gathered against you? Speak the word. Listen to this. Every time life tells us whose team we should, have, we should follow. Either we follow the devil's team or follow God's team. Every time, no matter what goes around you, what is what God has said to you? Reach fulfillment. That means the fulfillment of, your pro of his promises concerning your life. So if anything contrary is coming up, can you speak the promise? Can you speak the promise? Can you say, I know how we'll get there. I know I'm going to make it. Uh, scripture says in 828, book of Romans, all things work together for good. The Bible did not say good things work together for good. That would have mean that we don't expect bad things. Scripture says all things. Therefore, we know. It didn't say for we think. It said for we know that all things. Uh, that word all means the bad. 
That all means the one I don't understand. You know, there are things that happen to you in life. You don't know whether it's bad or good, right? The good, the bad, the one I didn't get where to please them. He said, all things are working together for good to them who love God and to them who are the called according to his purpose. Hallelujah. I know it like I know my name. It is working for my good. Can you look at your name and say, I know it like I know my name. <laughs> Do you know your name? Are you sure? I, I can't convince you that your name is not Mickey. Yeah, I can't, right? So I know it like I know my name. Tell your neighbor that. I will not give you an area more. I, I, you are preaching just one word. You are tired. It's pretty very well. Look at your name. I know it like I know my name. All things are working for my good. Sack you on your job. Praise God. They tell you to go away. Tell them, praise God. A guy told you, go I don't need you no more. It's because you are better than that guy and better than his destiny. Somebody's greater is coming. Hallelujah. You don't deserve a loser. You deserve a winner. Glory to God. Come on, move on. With joy in your heart. Your heart may be bleeding, but let joy stay. Never say anything that is contrary. Stick with God's word. I know that the end of the righteous is good. Bible says, mark the upright man. Mark even the righteous man. The end of that man is good. Is blessed. That's what scripture says. The end of that man is blessed. I don't know where I am now, but the end of that man, scripture says, is blessed. I think that's Psalm 37 37. The end of that man is blessed. The end of my life is blessed. The end of my life is blessed. There might not be money in my account now, but the end of my life is blessed. There's no ring in my heart because I'm not married, but the end of my life is blessed. Is somebody listening to me? The end of your life is what? It's rich fulfillment. It's blessed. It's the wealthy place. It's blessed. I may be struggling right now to even make one sale. But the end of my life is blessed. The end of it all is blessed. The end of it all is blessed. You've got to come to that reality. The end of it is blessed. God is a God of process. He speaks about destination. He doesn't speak about where you are. See, I will make you the father of many nations. He didn't know. If he had known that he would suffer so much, he probably would not live. That's why God did not tell you the journey. He only told you, let us go. Glory to God. <laughs> Number two, never be bitter or walk in offense. That's my advice to you. Never be bitter or walk in offense. Somebody did you bad. You, you see his phone call and your heart rate increase. Somebody jitted you and you see his picture on Facebook and you felt like cursing him. I know now. No, never be bitter. Never. When men use you, when you feel used, when they have written over you, that's what scripture says. They will ride over you, right? <laughs> you can't feel bitter. Do you remember Joseph? Do you remember Joseph in prison? Do you remember that interpretation of dreams? Very precise. He used his gift where? The butler was put back in his place as a man who poured wine in the hand of the king. What a beautiful manifestation of the gift upon a man. <laughs> and they only add one thing. He didn't have money in prison, so he didn't charge him money. He only asked him one thing. When you get out, please, don't forget me. Do you think they don't know in prison who is the president of Nigeria? Do you think they don't know? Answer me. They know. In prison, he had that that man has been returned. And he probably had that that man has built houses and he has moved on. Ah! <laughs> if that was some of us. I say, let me say this to you. Let me say this to you. The devil is on my case. Allah no me to back, baby. That's when you will be seeing wicked revelation. My, my, my helper has forgotten me. This is the hand of the devil. This is the I prophesied. The man, if you just speak a word like this, they will release me. Butler beside the king. The greatest kingdom at the world in the world. This is like the PA. This is assistant. Ah! He forgot me. And you declare 30 days fasting and prayer. Evono, Evono, Evono. My life is slow. Hold on, make it fast. Oh man, she a kaba. E do do do. E do do no mara no kumodna. Ilu shukuto vekini ana pastor pray for me. Pastor pray for me. I am glad that that man forgot Joseph. I am glad that he didn't remember him. Because if he had remembered him, they would have released him. 
But Potiphar was no ordinary man in, Israel, in Egypt. Potiphar too was one of the mighty guys in Egypt. So if they had released him from prison, they would have sent him out of Egypt. He probably would have gone, just stolen away. He would have just gone, released and just go away because if Potiphar finds you, his presidential pardon. Now you can't talk anything in the newspaper. Just be very quiet in your home. That's all. That's all he would have received. But when the time appointed of God came, he became the head of Potiphar, head of butler, head of everyone. I'm glad he was forgotten so that the fullness of God's plan for his life can come to pass and no man can share the glory. It was God alone that did it and God alone. God gave the dream even to the king and only him could interpret the dream. And as a smart young man, he put himself in the interpretation. He said, let the king therefore search for a man so that the man can therefore make sure that this is the time of the blessing and the time of the... And the man actually put himself there. He said, so that in the time of the blessing, we will save something. Things. And it, ah, they looked at him and said, who else can do these things? How about you are here? You are here. That's your job. If he had been helped by man, he would never get there. Wait for the help of God. Look at your neighbor and say, wait for the help of God. I'm thankful the butler forgot him. I'm thankful they didn't release him. I'm thankful he was still in that place for the interpretation of dreams. I was thankful. Because if he had left, the butler would have also remembered. Ah, that guy can interpret this dream. Oh. But where would they find him? There's no Instagram. You know how you lose people, you go on Twitter and say, this man, if you find him, please let him. There's no way to find him. No phone. He was gone. Away from destiny and life. Listen, God has a plan for your life. God has a plan for your life. See, this is not preaching to somebody. Look up and tell yourself, God has a plan. God has a plan. For my life. How does this relate to me? Somebody's asking me. The Bible says in Romans 15 verse 4. It says all things that were written were written for our learning and our instruction. They were written so that we can also find hope. Like Joseph, maybe I should put this at another point. Keep your dream alive. Like Joseph, keep your dream alive. If, that, if you want to have number three, that's number three. Keep your dream alive because it will come to pass. Like Joseph, keep your dream alive. That's my advice to you. When you're going through tests, don't let that test take away your dream. Don't let that test take away your dream. I've been there and I said to somebody, I said, no way. I will protect this dream with the whole of my heart. Because surely as there is an end, the expectation of the righteous shall not be cut short. And then number four right now, guide your heart. Because God is watching the state of your heart. Guide your heart. Why should you guide your heart? Because God is watching the state of your heart. God does not reward what we see. He rewards our hearts. The Bible says God looks on the inside. Men look on the outside. On the outside. 4 Samuel 16, 7 to 8. Boss, uh, Samuel said, see the Lord's anointed is before me. God said, no, I've rejected him. He said, because I, the Lord, does not look as man look. Man look at the outside. I look on the inside. The reason some people are not blessed, even though they pray a lot, is that God can see what's going on in their heart. God can see. What you say matters to people. What you think matters to God. Write that down. What you say matters to people. What you think matters to God. For he seeks the inside. Give me James 1 to 4. James 1. 2 to 4. Listen dear friends. You need to watch your heart. Really really watch your heart. <laughs> The Bible says, my brethren, can I, I'm James now, I'm writing to you, ransomed out. My brethren, can't it all joy? <laughs> when you buy Homer, because that's when we can't eat joy. This is that's when we can't eat joy now. They will say, Pastor, I just bought a car. Can you pray for it downstairs? Glory to God. And people surround it, joy. See what he said. He said, brethren, can't it all joy? If I do a Thanksgiving service because I'm going through trial, don't you think I'm mad? That's what people think. But that's how far away from scriptures we have gone. The Bible says, count it all joy when you fall into one trial. Is that what he said? He said various trials. That means different grade, different level, different ways. He said, count it all joy. Why is that so? Is it because we are a God that doesn't like pleasure? Or is that a God that doesn't like pleasure? No, he said, knowing that the testing of your faith will produce patience. 
When you see people who are not patient, life will teach them. Allah, ah. <laughs> you will calm down. He says, for let patience, he said, knowing that the test of faith produces patience, but let patience have its perfect work. That word perfect is the word teleos in Greek. What he says is that let patience have a complete work. Let patience be matured. Because patience will bring you to maturity. He said that you may be perfect. Again, the word teleos, complete, matured, lacking nothing. If you want to be complete, then you must count some things joy. Glory to God. Look at that thing you have been going through. And just smile. I don't want you to laugh. Just smile. <laughs> you see, as you do that, you are fulfilling scriptures. Count it all joy. Count it all joy. Glory to God. Hallelujah. When a man's heart has failed, everything has failed. Proverbs 4, verse 23. The Bible says, guard your heart. Put a garrison around your heart. For out of it flows the issues that governs life. 51.10 of Psalms. Uh, it says, create in me a clean heart. Create in me a clean earth. Create in me a clean Because he understood the power of the earth. In actual English, when you say the art of the matter, you're actually talking about the core, the gist, the core gist. The, the art of a being is the core of him. Let me say this to you. If you lose your eyes, you will still live. If you lose your leg, you will still live. Somebody following me. If you lose your air, <laughs> you have become a quarry. Have you bad at it? But you are still alive. Right? <laughs> But if you lose your heart, you are gone. You are dead. Do not lose your heart. Because to lose that means to lose hope. Do not lose hope. Do not lose your heart. Guide against your heart. Guide your heart, sorry, against exhaustion. Guide your heart against giving up. Guide your heart against capitulation. Guide your heart against surrender. Don't surrender. Don't say, I give up now. No. Guard your heart against bitterness. Somebody say, I give up on marriage. <laughs> because of nonsense you read on Twitter. <laughs> Come on, stop that. Guard your heart against bitterness. Guard your heart against negativity. Guard your heart against unbelief. Guard your heart against sadness. I'm, I'm just depressed. I'm just grieved. Come on. Guard your heart. For your entry into the worldly place. It depends on it. It depends on it. Give me 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 7 to 9. Listen. I want to show you two scriptures here. Two scriptures. But I want to start from 2 Corinthians chapter 4. So that you will see that it is not, it is the generation of the righteous that goes through trials. But what you go through that makes you cry. Some people is going through it and he's smiling. Do you know that the same son that solidifies the clay, met the candle. The same sun is what you are made of. You are not going through something you cannot go through. Smiling and laughing. It is what you are going through. It's your mind. Look at what Paul said. He said, but we have this treasure in earthen vessels. That the excellence of the power may be of God and not of us. Where do we have this treasure? That means you can crash. He said, we are hard pressed on every side. That means that trials, pressure. He said, pressure is getting worse, right? <laughs> There's pressure on every side. He said, yet we are not crushed. He said, we are powerless. To be powerless means not to know what to do. He said, yet, not in despair. He said, persecuted, but not forsaken because Jesus will never leave you. And he said, struck down but not destroyed. Not destroyed. See, it's, it's that mindset you must possess. If God makes you go through it, it's because he trusts you that you can go through it. He trusts you that you can go through it. Stop crying. You are not a lily livered. You are the son of a lion. As a son of a lion, be a lion. Stop running from trouble. Trouble your trouble. Stand. Why are you running away from things God wants you to surmount, to destroy? Be who God has made you to be. Let me show you what the world place is in the New Testament because you will start from the old, right? Now, let me show you what it is in the New Testament. Second Corinthians, the same chapter 4, and then 17 to 18. 
the same chapter 4, 17 to 18, Second Corinthians. When I saw this, it was so beautiful. So, so beautiful. Right? Um, ah, these are people are very fast. Though. Glory to God. Second Corinthians 4. I think I'm going there myself. Eh? Are they there? Oh, you don't trust them. Say it louder now. <laughs> Glory to God. They are there, all right? What did Paul call it? One, two, three, go. Read the screen. Stop. Again. See, Paul is a very dangerous man. He's a very dangerous man. What that man calls light is not light, though. To get married and not have children in 10 years is not light affliction. To walk and make sales and not have money in your account is not light affliction. To not be able to pay bills in Lagos, in Kogib can be fine because your family must can help you. Just say, come, on, come back home, come back home. In Lagos, there's no home to go back to because even your parents' house, they just manage to abort you for a while. Now they just find small space. You now want to come back to that space. Mm-mm. Be going. He called it what? Ah! It is because this is the perspective of them that have faith. No matter what you go through, when you can call it light, you can defeat it. But the moment in your head you call it strong, it's, it's going to defeat you. Ah! Ogunja me! Mm. Powerful! The devil! Ah! The way you are talking, you can't come out. Paul said light affliction. Look at that thing and call it light. light ah! He said for our light affliction. He said, which is but for a moment. A moment can be 20 years. A moment can be 10 years. A moment. A moment. But Paul said, because you have an endless life, that means you can't even die. When you die here, you move to heaven. Paul, look at that span of your life together. You are still going to live for a thousand years more. Or more. So that 10 years Compared to just 1,000, it's just a moment. He said, it's working for us. That's why I tell you that this thing is working for you. Did I not tell you? He said, it's working for you a, a far more. He didn't say a more. He said, a far more. That's an adjective defining something. He said, a far more. Another adjective. Exceeding weight of glory. I know, exceeding an eternal weight of glory. Oh, there is a weight of glory. All of these things, what you call the worldly place, Paul call it the place of glory. You know, when there is a fulfillment of all your desires, you have entered into glory. When that ministry has become what God planned, when your vision has come true, when you step out of that car with your husband, with children, going to church with a perfume that strikes so calmly, you know, good perfume, don't shout. <laughs> I, I know you. People can see that that is a glory. See, I just love that family. See how calm they are. People don't even shout around you, right? Because you have entered into that weight of glory. Exceeding an eternal weight of glory. Why we do not look at the things which are seen, but at things which are not seen. Your job, in lack of job, and that job, we can see it. We can see that that job does not pay you well. We can see it. With the way you are not changing clothes, we can see that they are not paying you well. We can see. We can see. But he said the things which are seen are what? Come on, look at that devil and say you are temporal. You are temporal. Glory to God. Let me round up here and give you two more. And then we'll go home. Hallelujah. Is it been value for your time? All right. I said stick with the word of God. Never be bitter or walk in offense. Is that not what I said? I said guard your heart. Keep your dream alive, right? And that one just came now. So write down, down. Guide your heart. And then number five now. Rest and keep your praise. Rest. Do you watch football? Do you watch football? If they tell you that Manchester United is going to come and play in Iba. In Iba. You don't play better. You don't play better. But if they ask you, 
I think they used to call this one a short bet or something. That's it. Now, if they ask you that, Manchester is playing here in Iba. Are you going to lose your sleep that maybe Manchester will win if you are a Manchester United supporter? In fact, Sancho can probably shoot from the midfield and the keeper will not know what to do. <laughs> you know what's going on here? Because you know that they are better. They are better. You know there are times that believers just, sometimes Nigeria is playing and because of hope, you know, Nigeria is built on hope. You just have hope that we win. We have hope. Anything can happen. It's 90 minutes. That's how Nigeria talk. It's 90 minutes. It's two it game of two halves. It's not, not, not. But if you look at the players, you know you don't have chance. Let me say this to you. If you actually see who is on your side, you will know that the devil has no chance. You see that devil has no chance. That's why you should rest. That's why you should rest. Every time you wake up at night with that same dream, every day, they want to kill you. They don't want you to sleep. That's why you have that same dream every day. And when you wake up, you pray for three hours. But all of us rest. The devil knows that that's how to kill you. Next time you have that dream, stand up on your bed and tell that demon, if you come here again, I'm sending you to Abyss. Don't try it again. Don't try it again. This is a no-fly zone. And sleep back. That's to not take you more than two minutes. Two minutes and sleep. Rest. Where will my husband come from? Rest. Can you make one? If, if we can, we would have gone to shop right because of the way we see it troubles you. We'll buy one there. If we will buy, we'll be a rascally guy. Let the Lord produce what he can produce. Where will my job come? Rest. How will your bill come? Rest. How will I make it in life? Your problem. You see, when people even say that, make it in life, it's, it's a more comprehensive issue. How will I make it in life? You think make it is just something they say like, make it. It's not your problem. Rest. Rest. You have lost some things. How will I get restored? Rest. It is in rest that you will find help. Whatever you undo, God steps back. Whatever you release, God undoes on your behalf. Let God undo it. You've been handling it for the past few years. See your results. Let God undo it. Look at your neighbor and say, rest. Number, I say, rest and do what? And keep your praise. Listen, whenever we are traveling, the kids and the kids are with us. They are super pumped for the destination. They are not interested in the journey. So the favorite word is, are we there yet? Are we there yet? So one thing we have found out in order to help us is we tell them to sleep. And we ensure and we try to ensure that they sleep. So that by sleeping, when they wake up, we are almost there or we are there. Listen, the reason it seems like your journey is far is because you are not at rest. Dear friends, the only way to enjoy the journey is rest. If you are afraid of traveling on Nigerian roads, I remember those days we used to go to Ilorin a lot. <laughs> you fly Ilorin Road. Have you gone from Lagos to Ilorin before? You are fine when you get to Ibadan. But when you get to Ibadan, your heart rate increases. Especially because of that or your... People, don't, people that don't pray before, when they get to or your... So, because the trailers will face you like this. I mean, they overtake you and face you like this. People start praying in tongues. Mando, anybody know what I'm talking about here? Kalimaro, yeah. Shamba, Libra. And immediately they get to Ogumasho, they put their in the lorry. So they can't even sleep off. Why? Because they believe that's the dangerous part of their journey. But some people actually sleep all through. Have you traveled with people? Have you traveled with people that, oh, yo, Ogumasho, Ogumasho, yo, the trailer facing you, you say, hey! They are sleeping. Have you met people like that? People sleep in their journey and they get there. Just the same way you people that are anxious got there, but they even get there in a better shape. They can get there and enter a meeting. You can't get there and enter a meeting because you just want to sleep. Enjoy your journey by praising it. Instead of having trouble on how it's going to happen. Because the devil is a quite crazy devil. You are in this or you feel like, now nah, I know what to do. You get out of here, your bills start calling you. In fact, the landlord is the first person that calls you after now. 
I say, Baba Alpha. <laughs> say, Pastor Enso, light affliction. I say, this pastor. <laughs> this, when it comes like that, and instead of you saying these pastors, just say, thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for everything you have done in my life. Thank you, thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you, Lord, for everything. Whatever your lot, learn to prison. Grumblers and complainers have no place in the future. That's what got Israel stuck for 40 years and eventually they died in the wilderness. May you not die on your journey. It's not devils that keep people on their journey. It is the attitude. When you keep praising him, I told you last week, the Lord will protect you himself. A sure way to enter into your destination is via praise. Because where you are is not your final place. There is a chapter after the next. I used to preach a message called the next chapter after the last. There is a next chapter after this. And in that chapter, I see that you win. In that chapter, I see that you are victorious. Now, let's, conclu- let's conclude by looking at the conclusion of Psalm 66 verse 20. You know, I told us I want to look at that scripture holistically. That's like the verse, verse in Psalm 66. Give me Psalm 66 verse 20. Right? Glory to God. What does it say? Psalm 66 verse 20. This was the psalmist though. After he has gone through, I say he has taken me to the wealthy place. Do you understand that when we read that verse, we never found out that he prayed. We never even found out that he praised. Did you discover that? But look at what he said in 66 20. He said, blessed be God who has not turned away my prayer nor is mercy from me. When you say blessed be God, what does that mean? Praise. You must learn to always say blessed be your name. You must learn to always say thanks be unto God. And that leads me to the final point number five. Pray and seek for his mercy. He said blessed be God who has not turned away my prayer, nor is mercy from me. Look at it and say blessed be God. You think your prayers are not answered, right? But I'm assuring you. Say, blessed be God. Blessed be God. Who has not turned away. Ah. Have they returned it? They have returned it now. <laughs> Look at him and say, blessed be God. Blessed be God. Who, has Who has not turned away. My prayer. My prayer. That means you must pray. Did you see that? You must pray. Because if he didn't pray, he won't get us in the world the place. One of you said, thank you. You didn't turn away my prayer. You didn't turn your way face for my prayers. My prayers were answered. Now you think he's not answering, but at the end, you will discover that he answered. That's what the psalmist found out. He said, thanks be to God who has not turned away my prayers, nor is mercy from me. If you are ever going to make it in life, you will need God's mercy to speak in your life. Everything you will have will not be end. There will be times that God's mercy will speak for you. There will be seasons in your life that you will understand it is not me, it is the mercy of God. There will be things that only God's mercy would have been able to avail even for you. You will know, I didn't cover this in my prayers. No, it wasn't my prayer point. No, I I didn't even think that this could have happened. I didn't know that it would favor me this way. This was absolutely his mercies. And this leads us to what I'll share with you next week. The sure mercies of David. Listen, dear friends, if you, if you do miss, don't miss service on Sunday. Whatever you do, listen, there are things you will begin to enter. There are things you will find in your life. You will know it's not you. When I show you and I give you the keys, that this is the key that David had. David was a sinner, a killer. And the Lord caught a covenant of sure masses with him. Saul never killed anybody. In logic, Saul was a better person. But he didn't find mercy. May you find mercy. He said, no, it's mercy 
from me. He didn't. He didn't take it from me. Will somebody arise and just one, two minutes begin to say, thank you, Lord. Because all my prayers are answered. See what I said. I said, all my prayers are answered. Are you working in the answer now? It might not have manifested, but thank him because all your prayers are answered. Can somebody begin to say thank you? Thank you because all my prayers are answered. Thank you because you have not turned away my prayers. To turn away means to, to set aside. Thank you because you have not set aside my prayers. Thank you, Jesus. You have not set aside my prayers. No, have you turned away from mercy? Turned away your mercy from me. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we worship you. Lord, we thank you. Thank you for all my prayers are answered. The one you prayed in the middle of the night, the one you prayed while laughing, the one you prayed while crying. All your prayers are answered. All your prayers are answered. I give you 30 more seconds to just say thank you, Lord. All my prayers are answered. All my prayers are answered. Hallelujah. All my prayers are answered. Hallelujah. The one you didn't even believe so much, his mercy will make it come true. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. All my prayers are answered. Father, we worship you. Lift up your hands and just bless his name. Bless his name. Bless his name. Thank you for listening. This has been The Living Word. If you have been blessed by this teaching or for counseling or any other inquiry, kindly send us an email to pfa at the ransomedhouse.com or fisayoadenii at yahoo.com or please call 0912-772-3824. The Ransomed House, empowering people to live for Jesus.